What's up everybody? Travis here from Travis.media. In today's video, I want to share with you a couple of realizations that I came to earlier this year and how that's going to impact this channel in 2020. All right, so if you're into web development, coding, just conquering life in general, consider hitting that subscribe button below. Lots of great videos are on the way this year. So let me tell you a quick story. So earlier this year, probably the very beginning of this year, I was on AppSumo, I was checking something out, and they had this new app. It was some kind of YouTube app that would give you all these statistics and all of this stuff. And I was like, that's kind of neat. You know, I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel. I'm trying to create some quality videos. That might be an interesting app. And so I looked at it and a lot of the metrics on it just weren't that helpful. I wasn't that excited about it, but it had one feature that I thought was neat. And that was the ability to view what tags a video used, right? So somebody uploads a video and they fill out a bunch of tags to help in the search profile. What tags are, are videos using? So for instance, if I make a video called the top five programming languages in 2020, and it's not doing that well, and somebody else does the same type of video and it's doing really well, I'm curious as to what tags they used. So I thought, hey, maybe I'll get this app so that I can kind of look and see what tags people are using. But at that same moment, it dawned on me, you know what, there's a YouTube API, right? And I'm a developer, right? Why don't I just create something that will give me the tags of any video out there. I mean, this may be common sense to you, and it should have been common sense to me, but sometimes as developers, we forget that we have this superpower of creating whatever we want. I mean, really, the sky is the limit. And so that's exactly what I did. Got rid of that AppSumo idea, I saved myself 50 bucks, and I wrote a quick app that would pull the tags of any video. Now, that kind of app doesn't need a database. All it has to do is make API calls. So I chose React to build the app. I didn't have to worry about security or anything like that, like hiding my tokens, my API tokens, because it's just local on my computer. It's a local app that just benefits me practically in my day-to-day -day activities. So I decided to build this app in React. Well, React is something that I looked into last year and I learned a little bit about, but I don't use it daily in my job and I don't really have a reason to really go deep with it, though I love it and I think it's one of the top libraries out there, but I'm not very well versed in React. I know JavaScript, so I knew I could pick it up pretty quick and I had done some tutorials on it in the past. So here's what I did. So here's another realization. I had two options at that point. I could go to Udemy, get some React course, spend two, three, four weeks learning React, or I could say, hey, I know JavaScript, I know about components, I know about state, why don't I just start building this thing? And then when I hit roadblocks, I'll just go to the documentation and look up how to do that. So I decided to do that. Hey, I need you know, a header, I need a body, I need a search bar, and I need a results component. So I got like four components, right? That's simple, so I created four components. And before you know it, I hit a roadblock. Like I'm passing the state to this child component, but I actually needed to go to the grandchild component. Like how do I pass state down to like grandchildren? So I had to look that up and looking that up taught me, hey, state goes this way. State goes from parent to child, first lesson, wonderful. So in my grandchild or child component, I had some kind of event and I needed that event to go back up to the parent. Look that up, I found out that events go the other way. Now in that 50 hour Udemy course, that, that, was, that would probably be like hour 30. But I didn't really need all of that introductory stuff to build this app. I needed to hit that roadblock, look up the solution, and from that, apply the solution and keep moving on. And actually, if I was in a Udemy course, and I came across state and events, what direction they go, I may not even understand it because I'm just following the course, I'm building what the instructor's building, but I haven't really faced that problem practically yet. So that taught me a lot right there. Started building the app, hit a roadblock, found the solution, applied it, kept moving on, hit a roadblock, found the solution, applied it. And after a while, and this is another realization, after a while I was like, wait a minute, I'm passing state all over the place. I'm passing events all over the place. This can't be good, right? I just have all of this data flowing all different directions. This can't be good. There has to be a solution out there. So I get on Google and I type it in and all of a sudden, what is the solution? Redux. Oh, Redux. 
I've read up on Redux in the past. I thought I had an understanding of it, but it really didn't make a whole lot of sense until I had the need for it. So hopefully I'm not just rambling here. Hopefully you see where I'm getting. In 2020, I started it off with the realization that perhaps building everyday practical apps instead of taking long drawn out Udemy courses may be a better way to learn for developers that already have a base foundation. Again, maybe common sense for you. For me, not so much. Let me give you another quick example. So I got into Flutter this year, Dart, Flutter, building mobile apps. I got into that a little bit, right? Um, and by a little bit, I mean, I just looked at a few examples. And, you know, Dart is a lot like it's, well, it's a lot like Java, which means it's a lot like C Sharp. So the language looked pretty familiar to me. But what is this Flutter thing, right? So I did a few lessons on Flutter, just up front. How does Flutter work? What are these widgets, container, row, column, that kind of thing? And instead of going into another 60-hour Udemy course to get all of the nuances about Flutter and then quitting 20% of the way through, that's what we all do. Instead of that, I said, hey, what's a practical app I could build? And actually, instead of practical, I decided to build something funny for my kids. So here's what I did. I built this app that shows each family member in a grid, right? So I got four kids, me, my wife, the four kids, right? So on the iPhone, it shows up in a grid. And when you click on one of the, the people, it plays some kind of audio clip. So if you click on me, it plays some audio clip. When you click on this kid, it plays an audio clip. And what I did was I went back and I found these really funny clips that we had taken, you know, a year or two, five years ago. And I just put these different audio clips. So I got five audio clips per person. And the kids thought it was hilarious. I thought it was funny. And I'm thinking, again, I just built something unique that's fun and practical in my own day-to-day -day life. So after doing that, I began looking around. Hey, what else could I build? Well, why don't I build an app? that every day when I wake up, I can click on it and it gives me all of the things that I look for every morning, right? So why doesn't, why, why don't I create a little app that shows me the weather, Bitcoin price, maybe a one or two of the top news out there, my daily to-dos and things like that. I could just build that app, right? I started looking around again. I see people are building stuff like um, using Flutter built an app to remind me to drink water every hour. You put some kind of neat animations in there and it just, kind of blew my mind like all of this time I've been building for clients and I've been building for work and I've been learning and building stuff with Udemy teachers or Skillshare teachers following along right building stuff for people or mimicking other people to learn a language but never have I just started randomly building everyday practical apps that benefit me Here's some other examples. An uptime monitor for your website? Simple, just a bash script. So for example, if I kill my website, within less than a minute, I have it set up to try and restart that process. If it restarts successfully, it will email me and let me know, hey, your site was down, but we were able to restart it. If it's not able to restart it successfully, then it'll still email me and say, hey, we tried to restart it, but we couldn't do it. It's still down. So if I go ghost stop to stop my website check out my site my site is down so I'm hidden here I'm refreshing hey my site's not starting right I'm refreshing there it is my site started back up and guess what here's the email that it sent me ghost was down but I was able to restart it on my droplet now that is really neat it's an uptime monitor that automatically tries to heal itself a trending section on your home page? Just use the Google Analytics API. Sometimes my family has a hard time deciding where to eat. Why not an app that simply flips a coin? Hey kids, hit the button. Oh, you got heads, we're going here. Very practical apps. Now check out my videos page. Now what I did was I just manually embedded the list of YouTube videos on my page and then when a new, new one comes out, I have to shift them all down and, and put the new one at the top. Why don't I just use the YouTube API there and just every couple of days have it shoot a message out to the API and rearrange the videos? Sorted by newest. The ideas are endless. It's so easy to take apps that people have already built and just pay for them. And sometimes that may be justified, but at the same time, don't forget you're a developer. You can build it. And you don't have to build it for the world and put all of these safety checks and scale it and all that stuff. Just build it for yourself. Just have your own little practical apps. When people see your phone, they can say, hey, what is this? You'll be like, oh, it's, oh, it's an app I built for this reason. 
And then who knows, that app may take off. Somebody may say, hey, I want that. Hey, I want that. And then all of a sudden you got an app that, and then you can worry about scaling it or selling it or providing some SaaS model, whatever. What this did was this sparked in me a desire this year to just build a whole bunch of practical apps that benefit me and probably other people out there. Because as developers, we have that superpower, but we just don't exercise it. We can build anything, but we don't do it because we're building along with other people or we're building stuff for work. So all of this is to say in 2020 here on YouTube, I'm going to start building like an app a week, an app every two weeks, just random practical apps, probably with Flutter, uh, maybe React, C Sharp or something like that. But I'm going to try to come up with a bunch of practical apps and build it here on YouTube. If you have any ideas like, hey, I want you to build this kind of app, then let me know. Maybe I'll build it for you. And don't worry, I'm still going to do my practical uh, opinionated videos. So I may do those every Sunday and then sometime during the week do an app building video. So again, hey guys, if you're developers, start building stuff. If you have a good base, just find something that you think is neat and just start building it. Mock it up. What do I need here? And just start building it. When you hit that roadblock, look it up, apply it, and keep moving. It's been a big wake-up call for me this year. So far, and it's only February. So be on the lookout for some new videos. Hopefully this sparks some ideas in your head. And again, let me know below if there's any requests. Or let me know below what you're building, because I would love to hear it. I would love to get ideas from you as well. So as always, hit that subscribe button and be on the lookout for a bunch of new videos in 2020.